Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Breaking Brews Podcast, a podcast focused on the business side of beer and what's driving today's thriving craft beer industry. Whether you're one of the thousands of people making craft beer what it is today, or just love great beer and want to know more about it, this show is here to cover everything from sales, marketing, branding, culture, and much, much more. The Breaking Brews Podcast delivers real-life scenarios and experiences from industry professionals that will help your beer knowledge evolve. To tap into more great beer content, visit BreakingBrews.com today. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. Let's get this session started. All right, boys and girls, it is Doubleheader Week here on the Breaking Brews Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Sircone. Welcome back to the show. We are getting ready for two sessions to come your way this week. The first today being session 13. If you haven't done so already, jump into the archives, check out all the past episodes. Also, jump over to iTunes slash Apple Podcasts. Leave a rating and review. Let me know how I'm doing and help the podcast find the ears of more thirsty beer enthusiasts and beer professionals just like you. You can also subscribe to the Breaking Brews podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, or Spotify. Keep up to date on everything about the show over at breakingbrews.com slash podcast. Access show notes and hear any cool shit we've got coming your way in the near future. So today, Session 13 is kicking off two good episodes this week. I feel like this is movie week here on the Breaking Brews podcast. We've got two great episodes movie creators on the show. The first, Nate Kresge, who is the owner of GK Visual in Harrisburg, PA. Nate was in town recently, so he joined me here in the studio to rap about Port in Pennsylvania, which is his company's production. He's got some big news to drop on that movie, so you're going to hear that on the show today. Also, you're going to hear about the production of the movie, what Nate and his crew got to do in regards to traveling across the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, visiting brewery after brewery, discovering a ton of great stories, hearing about business practices, and they put it all together for us to enjoy in one nice little compact movie. And Nate's going to share where you can find that movie as we speak. Pretty exciting stuff for them. Couldn't be happier for the success that they've had with that flick, and we're going to hear all about it today. Nate and I are going to have some fun. I hope you guys are ready to do the same. So let's get rolling here on the Breaking Brews podcast. This is session 13 with Nate Kresge of GK Visual slash Port in Pennsylvania. All right, fuck it. Let's just roll. Nate, what's up, man? How's it going? (laughs) Good, dude. Welcome to the studio. Great to be here. I appreciate you having me. So we are joined today, ladies and gentlemen, by Mr. Nate Kresge of GK Visual in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. If you've seen any of the politicians' ads on television up up and up and running before and d- during election times, Nate's company is behind several of those. On the beer end, Nate's company produced Poured in Pennsylvania, which is a great documentary that tells the story of beer in Pennsylvania going back hundreds of years up to our current state in the craft beer industry. So it's great to have Nate on the show today. Nate, let's talk about you. Well, give us some all, background on yeah, yourself. Yeah, first of all, thanks for redeeming me after saying I did all the politicians' ads on your TV. So <laughs> I know how much people love those. Well, it's quality content, brother. <laughs> well produced. It looked great. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I'm Nate Kresge, and and also thank you for pronouncing my last name correctly because that rarely happens. I'm in that boat too. Sir Cone gets butchered yeah, like a mofo, I am brother. Sure. Um, I have a video production company um, with. Uh, a couple of other guys here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, uh, GK Visual. We do a variety of things, um, corporate videos, training videos, promotional videos, you name it. But the funny thing about us is, well, I don't know if it's funny. I think it's it's pretty normal when we be on shoots anywhere. But, you know, as soon as we're done shooting, the first thing we do is, where's the closest brewery? Fuck yeah. You know, so we finish the day. We've been shooting all day. Everybody wants a beer. And... There is nothing better than finding uh, a nice little local brewery at the end of the day after working. And, and, you, and you get to discover um, something new and something um, that is local, right? Right. And um, so we've been doing that for years. And 
you know, over a few beers, you're like, oh man, you know, wouldn't it be great? Let's do a video about, about brewing. And, um, so a few, a few years ago, we started out and did a, a documentary called Brewed in the Berg. That's, uh, with no H at the end of Berg. So, uh, that's, that's Harrisburg. I had a great time doing that. And the whole time we did that, we're like, we really should do a statewide version. So out of that was born, born, uh, poured in Pennsylvania. And, and that's, uh, we finally were able to, you know, cobble together some funding and just set out and, and did it. So let's talk more about that. So obviously you've got to see up close and personal, how much has changed in Pennsylvania and, and how thriving of a beer community our, our Commonwealth has. So let's hear, let, let's start from the very beginning. So obviously you were inspired by the fact that you were finding all of these places. When did it finally click that this was going to be something that was going to be consumable by pretty much everybody in the beer community? And, and it took you on this statewide journey to find the biggest and the best of all the breweries happening. Or sure. Yeah. I mean, unfolding, um, I should say happening. They're all happening. You know, I just had a conversation today with somebody that you can have come from different walks of life and, and, and the different backgrounds, but the commonality is beer, right? So you, you walk into a bar, you walk into a brewery and immediately you have something in common with somebody else. And so there's that, that common thread between all of us that we love beer. And, and the funny thing is it doesn't stop with just drinking. We love to talk about it. We love to debate it. We love to tell each other how they're wrong about their choices of beer. Um, and so uh, beer is definitely a subject that uh, people have opinions on and love to learn about and love to enjoy. And so I think it was a no-brainer f- for us once we did uh, the first movie. I had even heard, <laughs> this is a little bit of a side, but when we did that first movie, of Brood in the Berg, somebody had pirated it. Pirated it. it. <laughs> It's easy for you we, we've had a few beers before recording, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, so that's actually not bad. Anyway, they copied the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they put it up on YouTube themselves. No shit. Yeah, so, um, and the, the, the weird thing about it is if you watch it on YouTube, you could probably go right now and Google uh, Brew in the Berg, it'll pop up on YouTube, and it won't be our version of it, it'll be this other version, and uh, it'll play the whole way through, and then we'll start over halfway and play through the end. And this version of, of Brew in the Berg has been viewed uh, just countless times. And it was insane <laughs> to us. We, we had put it up ourselves after seeing this. And, and I've been asked a few times, should we tell them to take it down? I said, no. I mean, there's this many people watching it. Right. If nothing um, else is generating interest for exa- future projects. Exactly right. And, and so this went on for a while. And then we started to hear, oh, somebody's in Hawaii. And... They're in a brew pub, and guess what's playing? Little bars and, and and brew pubs in Harrisburg are on the TV. Oh, our film's playing in Hawaii. Wow. Oh, wait, somebody's in Japan. They're at a, a restaurant. Damn. And what what's on the TV? Uh, people from Harrisburg at their local brewery. So for some reason, this generated a lot of, a lot of buzz and uh, kind of just weird occurrences. And so uh, we knew then that, like, all right, it's time to do the the full statewide version. Yeah, that's definitely something there. All right, so I definitely want to dive deeper into the movie here as we go throughout the show here. But I know you've got some big news to share. So I want to give you the floor because while we're focused on evergreen content here on the Breaking Bruce podcast, this is some big stuff. And it's actually going to be some information that carries your productions on for a while. So... The floor is yours, my friend. Tell us all about what's coming up with Port in PA. Yeah, so this this will be news now, and and will last, you know, whenever anybody's listening to this. Um, the the first is that we have we have the film now on Amazon Prime. So it's huge. That means that uh, no matter where you're at, uh, where you're sitting, or you can look on your phone, your your laptop, your TV, whether or not you have Amazon. You, unfortunately, if you don't have Amazon Prime, you have to purchase it, but. If you have Amazon Prime, it's free. And if you don't have Amazon Prime by yeah, what's now, wrong with you, right? <laughs> what are you doing? It's 2019, folks. Um, but yeah, check it out. Port in Pennsylvania. Uh, type it into the search. It'll pop right up. Check it out. Um, so that that's huge for us. And then the second uh, bit of information is we are going to turn this into a series. 
Uh, so not only will we have the Port in Pennsylvania of a film, which is about 90 minutes, we're looking to do about half an hour episodes and start releasing those. I'm not sure the frequency yet. We're going to try uh, to ramp those up as much as we can, but um, starting here in a few months, I'll be looking for that also on Amazon. So we'll put those up there as well. That's cool. And we'll cover stories all across Pennsylvania. And for that, you, you'll see more of the style that you saw in the film, but you'll also uh, see a lot of um, smaller stories, you know, little little niche things that, you know, this, this beer community has so many stories to tell, and, and we're hoping to be able to uh, uh, dive into a lot of those. Congratulations Thank on you. both those pieces of news. That's fantastic stuff. Uh, having having caught the movie pretty much immediately when it was released, I think I actually got a sneak preview before it was actually live to the public, and it was fantastic. And appreciate that. I still remember Zach Morrow, who is he was on uh, session one of the Breaking Brews podcast, has a big part in that. And I texted does, him, I was yeah. like, "Dude, I'm watching your sexy face on my TV at 9:30 <laughs> on Sunday morning." He's like, "How are you doing that?" Well, his sexy face will be available to everybody at home now. So. <laughs> Yeah, if that does, if if nothing else sells this movie for you to go watch it on Amazon Prime, it's it's Zach and his beard and his sex face. Exactly. Yeah, there's a few beards in the film, not just just, a just few. Zach's. Yeah. <laughs> have and you, somebody <laughs> said to me too, I can't believe how many brewers have blue eyes, and I had no idea what she was talking about until I watched the film for like I don't know the hundredth time, and I looked. There are a lot of brewers with blue eyes. It's a weird thing. Um, Maybe a study needs to be done on that. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. Now I obviously didn't catch that. <laughs> Typically, that wasn't what, that was the content I was digging into when I watched Port and PA. Well, for your series, do you have any any topics nailed down that you guys want to tackle? We do. So the fir- the first episode will be uh, Harrisburg Beer Week, um, and you know for a couple reasons that's in our backyard. Um, mm-hmm. It's gonna be easy for us to uh, jump into that and cover that. Um, Harrisburg Beer Week's been going on for a few years now and, and, and just is a phenomenal event. After that, we'll talk, you know, different subjects. Uh, you know, one topic we'd love to get into is uh, beer influencers and the people that have blogs and podcasts just like yours. And no. um, what drives that? Does that help the industry? You know, what what does that add? What does it take away? Um, that sort of thing. Who's, who's listening, who's who's reading, who's devouring that content. And then uh, then we'd like to travel the state. Fresh Fest here in, in Pittsburgh is a huge event. Absolutely. We'd love to cover um, and get some stories behind that. Uh, diversity in this field is lacking. <laughs> and, and Fresh Fest is definitely, a, you know, for, <laughs> for a lack of a better term, a fresh uh, face here it, it's to gr- this community. It's groundbreaking. It, it really no, no is. No question about it. And I don't know how much your listeners know about that, but um, they what started last year, and uh, this will be the second year, and um, it is a for you know a boiled down version, just a, a beer festival that celebrates diversity, yeah, and uh, does a great job at it. It's unlike any other beer festival I've ever been. No, to. I mean it's, I mean, and I know the the organizers have they they have nothing to to hide or to hold back on. It's the nation's first black beer festival. They have a lot of collaboration beers with black uh, or um, African American owned breweries across the country. They all come into Pittsburgh for the weekend. Uh, Garrett Oliver, uh, part of Brooklyn Brewery, is coming in to do a lot with Fresh Fest for the 2019 version. It took off like wildfire it for really them did, in yeah. 2018. And they did a great job. They really did. It was very well organized and. They've been pounding pretty much ever since the first one ended. It was like next day, recover from the hangover. Day after that, hit the hit the ground running and, and get 2019 yeah, up and going. Yeah. And they've been doing phenomenal. And it's going to be a great time. It's great to see somebody step up and, and, and take take charge of that particular aspect of our industry. Because like you said, Nate, it, we, we need that diversity. We do. And it's great to see everybody come together under one roof and, and really celebrate that. Yeah, so, and we, we still have every, you know something in common, and it's beer. Absolutely. So for all of our Pittsburgh listeners, FreshFestBeerFest.com is where you can learn more and you can buy tickets. And you know what? I'm going to extend the invitation to people outside of Pittsburgh. This Absolutely. is one that you might want to travel for yeah, because you're not going to... Yeah, you're not going to find this anywhere else in the country, so... Check out FreshFestBeerFest.com. All right, drinking partners, you owe me a plug. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, let's let's shift back to uh, Port in Pennsylvania. What kind sure. of what kind of recognition did the movie receive once you guys released it? Yeah. So uh, what we did for our rollout is we had a little uh, screening in Harrisburg during uh, Harrisburg Beer Week last year. Uh, that was well received, and then we entered film festivals, and so we we were accepted to thirteen different film festivals in six different states, and with those film festivals, we've pulled some awards. We uh, had uh, best documentary, uh, best feature length film, best editor, best director. So we're really proud of that, and it was really well received. You know, wherever we showed it, so we're hoping that you know we can build on that momentum and and carry this series on. Nice. So obviously in filming this, you, you've built some relationships with lots of breweries and that's going to carry over to the running series. How many breweries did you talk to? Do you know the number? It, it's, it's over 50 for sure. Okay. I think there's 70 some interviews in the film. So not only did we do breweries, but we also talked to um, uh, people that support the industry. So we're talking about hop growers. We're talking about um, there's American Keg that makes uh, kegs right. outside of Philly. Um, so other industries that support the uh, the beer industry um, were also included in the film. So what was it like traveling all over Pennsylvania and discovering these stories, business practices, and, and, and just getting to know all of these different breweries and, and the owners and people behind them? Yeah, so th- this is a great community. And I, I, I tell people all the time that um, you won't find this type of uh, industry anywhere else. You know, where, where else can you go that get you... Um, you know, somebody gave the example one time that a pizza shop owner ran out of dough. He, he's not going to call up the the pizza shop down the street and say, "Hey, uh, can I borrow some dough this week?" I'll, I, I promise I'll get you back. But that's what exactly what happens in the beer industry. You know, you run out of hops, you run out of yeast. You post a message on Facebook or you call somebody up, and boom, you, you have what you need um, with a matter of uh, of minutes or hours, and and they're all in it to help each other out. And I have worked in a lot of other industries through our video production company. And we, we've covered the energy industry, um, manufacturing, all, all sorts of different uh, industries, uh, health. And you don't see that. It's, it's cutthroat. Right? Yeah, right. And, and the beer industry can be cutthroat for sure. Mm-hmm. But there's also this, this brotherhood, sisterhood um, that you don't you don't find anywhere else. Yeah, I think it exists on different levels, but I think at the end of sure. the day, everybody realizes they're making beer. What they're trying to do is make the consumers happy, yeah. deliver a good experience, and a good experience at one brewery means that it could translate to a good experience at another. Absolutely. And there's a lot to be gained by these guys working together. And I mean, and we here in Pittsburgh, we can speak very strongly of the Pittsburgh Brewers Guild. And how they've come together to unify their efforts at Allegheny County, and you've got over thirty breweries in the county alone, which I believe is the number one or is the highest number of breweries in any county in Pennsylvania. I that. Yeah, and these guys work like a well-oiled machine. They put together their brewery guide, which has helped thousands of people discover different breweries. They take the the brewery guide checklist to each brewery, and they get stamped when they visit. They said, um, I, I, I don't know the exact number, but several people have completed the entire guide and they received a, a special glass commemorating the fact that they visited all of that these That is breweries. some dedication, yeah, right? Because there, there's a lot of breweries. Yeah, I mean, even working in the industry myself, I've not made it to all the breweries in Pittsburgh, unfortunately. There's still. And, and they keep opening. Yeah, and it's, which is great. It just shows how strong our scene is. And, sure. And. When and, and Nate and I were actually at a forum today where we were, I was hearing that the number of breweries in Pennsylvania now is over 350, which doesn't surprise me because I think the last time I checked it was 308, and it just seems like it's constant growth yeah, I, every we're day. We're gonna hit 400 here before oh, too long. I, I don't doubt that. And yeah. I mean, in, in this region where where we sit right now, I think there's another 24th in planning right now and whether they open by the end of this calendar year is something to be seen but there is a ton of action happening which gives you a lot of content it for, does for your yeah. travels and uh so when we did the film we actually interviewed bob bats who's a reporter yeah here mm-hmm. covers a lot of uh, beer uh, related news and he said right off the bat he's like used to uh, be no problem for me to keep on top of this but now i mean it's it's hard to keep up with yeah bob's hustling yeah. yeah, he puts out a lot of content about the brewery, so yeah, no doubt his pen's run out of ink a few times there. 
It's a tough industry to cover. Yeah, <laughs> tough but fun. I mean, when you really that's think about it, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, you're yeah. being sarcastic. That, okay. that, that's, that's me with a few beers kicking in, not realizing the sarcasm. So, in all of your travels, what was the most memorable story that you encountered? I don't know about uh, one individual story. Um, there are some highlights for sure. I mean, we got to talk to Dick Yingling at Yingling, and you know, for for what you think about Yingling. Um, you know, everybody has their own opinion about Yingling sure. and, and, uh, a lot of that's nostalgic and, and, and other people discredit them, but, uh, the history is there, but I will tell a behind the scenes story that, uh, Dick <laughs> Yingling, uh, helped us out with. Uh, so we, we went up to Pottsville and we shot an entire interview with him and everything was great. He gave great stories, a lot of great information and, we we talked to his daughter Wendy, she did a great job too. Go back to the office, and the guys are like, "Hey, uh, did you uh, did you take the card out of the camera? Like, do you have the card for Dick's uh, interview?" I'm like, "I have no idea what you're talking about. What's going on here?" I'm like, "Well, we don't see his interview anywhere on your camera." Oh no shit! And my camera was responsible for recording his audio. <laughs> Turns out. Uh, my camera never recorded and we went back and looked at it and even though the camera had the lights flashing saying it's recording it did not record first time i've had this company for 15 years now first time that's ever happened to me and it happened with dick yingling oh jesus so what do we do right this was a, a huge interview for us and i had our our producer sarah and i i, I talked to her and i said hey here's what happened She's like, all right, well, I'll get in touch with them and, and see what we can do. And they couldn't have been more gracious. Uh, yeah. Dick's like, come on back up here. We'll do it again. No problem. Happy to sit down with you again. So we went up there, and I was I was very nervous. You know, my heart's beating, and we walk up. And now, Yingling, when you go up there, there's a visitor center across from the brewery. And there's these gigantic doors. And so we got up there before they were normally open, so the doors were shut. And we, you know, we're knocking on the, on the doors and it's almost like you're going to see the wizard, right? Yeah. And, <laughs> and all of a sudden the door just swings open and, and, and Dick Yingling himself is standing there. And I said, I am so sorry. I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, thank you so much. He's like, no, thank you for coming back. And he was just tickled that we were there and happy to uh, talk to us again and gave us a, another great interview. And it just was a great experience. And uh, he said, whatever you need, just let, let us know. We'll, we'll be there for you. So which interview turned out better, first or the second? So <laughs> that is funny. So uh, Sarah, uh, our producer, Sarah Bozich, did uh, the interview both times, and he gave some great stories in the first one and great stories in the second one, and she was trying to get some information out of him than he gave him the first interview, and he would not yeah. <laughs> He would not get a, give the same interview. But all in all, it turned out great, and we, we got a great story out of him. That's cool. Well, nice that you get to go back. My yingling story is so much weaker than that. <laughs> I, I don't know if I should even bother telling it, but what the hell. Back in the day, I mean, I grew up in Bradford, Pennsylvania, sure. which is right on the border of PA, New York. They actually just opened their first brewery, which is pretty cool. So craft beer to us was pretty non-existent. And sure. We were also 18. We didn't yeah. man, know anything about this. But when we started school at Pitt Bradford, we met some kids that came in from Philly. And a girl was just up in arms, just could not believe we'd never had Yingling before. And we're just like, we've never even seen it. What the hell is the Yingling? She's like, you guys a have Chinese to- beer, the Yingling. <laughs> yeah, right. She's like, you guys have to find this beer. So we ended up finding it. They had six packs at this little shop, and my buddy and I had a fake ID at the time, so we went over there, and we like, well, here's this Yingling beer. Let's get it. We're thinking it's going to be this you know, magical, awesome thing. We crack one open. We toast, take a sip, and it's just like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and turns out, we, so we went back when we saw her at school. We are like, what the hell did you turn us on to? This Yingling is not good. And she goes, well, that's impossible. So I was like, it tasted like... It, I mean, again, not knowing what beer was at this time, other than sure. just the, the shit you drank to get drunk, we got black and tan. The oh, black that's and tan. so funny. <laughs> so, of course, going from drinking domestic swill all that's the time to black switch. and tan, that's a major palate jump. And she's like, you two are idiots. <laughs> so we went back and got the regular stuff, and we were, okay, this is good. 
this is good. Well, that's, that's funny for you to tell a Yangling story because, you know, often when I tell this story, everybody's like, well, my Yangling story is this. And and that's a great thing about Yingling. I think growing up in Pennsylvania is that a lot of people uh, that I know growing up, Yingling was the first. Yeah. Or one of the first, like, next step up for them, you know? Yeah. When I, when I first uh, I went to school in Florida and there wasn't yingling around and I kept telling everybody the same kind of thing. Oh, you got to try yingling. This mm-hmm. is the beer from home. And eventually I saw it at a bar. I'm like, Oh man, you guys got to try this. And everybody loved it. Yeah. So then I went to the local distributor and I said, is there any way I can order yingling? I'm like, yeah, I think uh, we can special order that and get it in. So I did it one time. I got a case and the next time I went back, there was cases everywhere. I was like, Oh, and then I started seeing it at bars. I'm like, what is happening here? I, I had some kind of power here, you know? And it turned out that's exactly when Yingling had to open up in Tampa. Okay. And so they exploded all over <laughs> Florida. I did not know that at the time. You and thought you were doing God's I thought work I had, here. I thought I had opened up Florida for Yingling <laughs> and it was going to get some checks. <laughs> not so much. The Strip District is one of the most historic areas in the great city of Pittsburgh. And no visit to this always hopping area of town is complete without a stop at the Beer Hive. Located in the heart of the Strip on Penn Avenue, the Beer Hive features a constantly rotating craft beer draft, bottle, and can selection for you to enjoy each and every day. Plus daily happy hours, special events, and much, much more. The Hive has also recently rolled out a new food menu too, so make sure you come hungry and enjoy all the good eats they have in store for you. Plus, grab your home stock of pickles, courtesy of Pittsburgh Pickle Company, as well as a jug of Briny Mary, a Bloody Mary mix infused with Pittsburgh Pickle Company brine. Perfect for those morning cocktails when you don't want to leave the house. To learn more, visit www.thebeerhive.com today and check them out on Instagram at thebeerhivepgh. Now, I think that what, what, I don't want to say surprised me about Yingling, but what I always thought was very cool was... I've heard stories of people because you know, like here in Pittsburgh, we like Steelers fans travel well. They say, but it's just so many people because of the nature of business here in Pittsburgh. They come here for a little bit of time and then they leave. Or people that have moved from Pittsburgh stay very loyal to their sure. sports team. So you see this all over the place. But the number of people that leave Pittsburgh or leave Pennsylvania and take Yingling back, it's like the treasure. Yeah, and. I remember my dad telling me a story when they were younger. The treasure beer was Coors Banquet Beer. If someone went west and came home with a case of Banquet Beer, they would plan a party around no getting kidding. to drink that beer. And Yingling seems to have that same effect. Yeah, People take it from Pennsylvania to wherever they go in the world, and they get the experience. And you hear it. People go crazy about it, which was always something. I think now like I look at where our industry has evolved to, those types of stories aren't as aren't told as proudly, but I still think that's one of the coolest things. When you can you actually get people to gather around one case of beer because it's so rare, that's some good shit. Yeah, yeah, and our our the the craft beer culture has changed so much now. It's you mm-hmm. know we we have Instagram and and you're coveting whatever you see somebody posting on. Their yeah, when's Instagram. the last time you saw an, a Yingling photographed exactly. on Instagram? Right? Yeah. 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 So. So we've changed a lot, but it, it's it's not that different because we always want to try what somebody tells us we should try, right? Right. And and seeking out Yingling was always kind of the 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 greatest thing. But now you know there's so many breweries, so many beers, and, and so little time that we're uh, our attentions yeah <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, I mean that's and you know we we you know I've talked about flagship beers on Breaking Brews before, and it's been talked about. I believe we talked about this on the podcast. I may be misspeaking. I know I talked about it on some podcast, but um, it, it people say it's dying, and I think to some degree, it's, I don't want to say it's dying, but it's changing. Sure. Because we're very much into rotation nation right now. What's the next beer I can try? What yeah. can I do to get my next badge or my up my check-in list on, yeah. on, on untapped? And it's nice to know, even though that's happening, I don't necessarily subscribe to it myself, but it's always nice to know there's always a good quality beer I can fall back to. Yeah. Always. Absolutely. And that's always, you know, if you go into a dive bar, and they have just a bunch of crap, and they have yingling on, you know, you're going to have a yingling, and you can enjoy it. As long sure. as they clean their tap lines and take care <laughs> of it, and you're good to go. So so the other story about being there is uh, we got the tour, and we went along the canning line, and uh, they grabbed cans right off the line for us, you know, so they weren't sealed or anything. Hand us a can of uh, yingling, 
And I took my sip of that, and I was blown away. I'm like, I've never had a Yingling taste this good. I mean, yeah. I've had a lot of beers, uh, <laughs> but this is exceptional. And so I, I've started telling a lot of people this story, and they're like, yeah, you got it before his pasteurize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so a fresh Yingling off the line before it's pasteurized is something to, yeah, they, to that <laughs> bu- bucket list shit for everybody. <laughs> Just go. get over to Yingling before they pasteurize. Yeah. So start to finish, how long did the whole project take you guys? Yeah, we, we um, shot for about a year, but there was a lot of planning leading up to that. Um, so I would say we probably had probably close to two years in it, put it from start to finish between the planning, the shooting, and then the editing was a whole process too. Yeah. And we kind of gave ourselves a deadline. We wanted to release um, during Harrisburg Beer Week uh, last year. So that would have been 2018, mm-hmm. uh, April 2018 um so you know you know you put it out into the world and there's always things when you watch you like oh we could have spent like another <laughs> six months on this you know right but uh i'm glad we got it out and i'm proud of proud of what we did so this is something i found pretty interesting when i watch it for the first time you, you have no narration your whole Correct. movie is based just off of the interviews that you that took place with all the different personalities that's correct was that the thought process going in or did you think now, as you were recording that the movie could stand on its own with just doing that. Yeah, that's our style. We love to have the people who live whatever story we're telling tell their own story. We do different types of videos, and sometimes we'll have a uh, a narrator or a voiceover artist or even somebody on camera. But our bread and butter and, and what we feel is most effective is having somebody on camera telling their own story. And so when we did this, um, you know, with... Uh, about 70 interviews there wasn't a shortage of people to be on camera and tell this story the tough thing was getting everybody in that we did interview and um finding that narrative with this series we're not sure exactly how it's going to look we want it to look very similar to the film and, and have as much of people telling their own story as possible we may have uh somebody intro episodes Mm -hmm. but not interfere with getting in the way you know and there there's a place for that you know you watch a reality tv or uh, someone on the food network and there's a host and he's running around a, a diner and and you right. know, get in your face and stuff but the tension then shifts right it's not necessarily on that establishment it shifts to the host and we don't want that we want the focus to be on beer and, and pennsylvania's beer story So what were some of the items that you looked for when determining what breweries you wanted to talk to to feature in the film? Yeah, we we cast a wide net Um, when we started this. We uh, reached out to a lot of breweries, but we wanted to kind of represent the entire state and and get every um, corner of it in the film. story of Yingling, so the oldest uh, brewery in the country, down to a home brewer who's just starting out and everything in between. And that's what we did. We have a couple of home brewers in the film that are um, going to be probably opening uh, breweries here within the within a year. Um, everything in between, and you know the funny thing is too. I guess it's not funny anymore, but things change so quickly in this industry that the film starts to become outdated a little bit because we're already seeing a couple of these breweries go out of business. Or yeah, unfortunately, we just yeah, had right. a, uh, one. Um, uh, file for chapter 11 yeah um when there's a hop grower in the film that uh, just announced that he's not gonna continue growing hops so yeah. you know things change and and that's that's business that's life um and i think that's part of the reason we want to do this uh, series is that we can be a little bit more adaptable and a little bit more current yeah and even though those businesses are unfortunately going to be leaving us they still were part of the narrative that got sure. us to where we are so even though correct. they won't be open they're still part of that initial recording yeah they impacted a lot of uh, neighborhoods where they existed yeah absolutely so you you had mentioned it nate you've seen this movie hundreds of times (laughs) editing and probably all the different festivals and and places you've been showing us is there anything that you see when you watch that you wish you would have done differently when you were producing it oh that's a great question you know i don't know that to be honest with you I'm, i'm i'm happy with what came out part of it that was difficult for us is making sure everybody was included. And so there, you know, for me watching it so many times, I feel like it drags every once in a while, but that's just me um, seeing it so many times. And I've I've mentioned that to other people and they're like, I don't know 
what you're talking about. It's great, you know. So uh, that's just being critical. I think with the series, we're going to be a little bit more selective and a little bit more um, focused on what we want to hone in on. So in your work with GK Visual, have you guys done anything with breweries beyond just filming this movie? We have, yeah. So um, we love to work with breweries, and obviously that's evident in doing the film. But we've done a lot of promotional videos for them with beer rollouts and that sort of thing. When the um, uh, Resilience IPA uh, came out mm-hmm. uh, from Sierra Nevada, and that, that was a project that they they did to try to raise funds for the, the people that were affected by the California wildfires. Breweries all over the country and all over the world actually um, were tasked with brewing up the same recipe IPA and then releasing that and, and giving the funds back to uh, the relief effort. We wanted to be a part of it the best we could. So we actually went and offered to any local breweries that we would do a promotional video for them. So a couple of them took us up on that and we were able to uh, put together some nice videos and whether it was our video or not, the beer sold out within a matter of hours kind of a thing. And then other things, you know, when, um, you know, some of our local breweries put out a new beer for whatever reason, and they want a little bit of punch behind that. They might call us in to, um, do a little promo video or, or something that kind of tells the story of why they brewed that beer. And then they can release that on uh, social media and, and put it out there for the public. And I will say social media right now seems to be just ruled by video. Really? And, yeah. I mean, odd, odd, visual to, you know, to every degree possible photo, great photos will tell a good story as well. Sure. But it, video, it really seems like if you do it right, you can, get some huge gains out of it yeah and there's a lot of breweries that are definitely taking advantage of that um you know i, I know you've uh, dealt with the levity guys so yeah for sure they, they've really been able to um leverage video on their facebook and instagram and not only just about themselves but you know i was out at uh, the craft brewers conference in, in denver not too long ago and th- they would go up to different people and do little video interviews with them. Yeah, I, I was watching that on their page and that was pretty that was pretty cool to see. They were capturing interviews with all kinds of different people. It was interesting, right? Yeah. And, and all all it was was, you know, somebody holding a cell phone up and somebody yeah. just uh, asking questions. It's yeah. that simple and and uh, you know, little insider tip here, you don't need a production company like me to do that kind of right. thing, right? You can do it yourself. Well, that's you look at what I do with video, it's pretty amateur especially compared to what you guys do, but like I I'm going to be releasing I've, I've done the daily pour which was every day i was doing a new yep. video where i was drinking a beer and then i realized i'm 39 years old and i can't do that <laughs> shit as consistently as i used to um then i renamed it today's pour so i could give myself more time but then i realized i was getting off schedule because i put a lot of time into some other <laughs> yeah, things yeah. so th- i'll break some news too that will be returning as the weekly pour which will show every friday on youtube on oh, the great. breaking brews youtube channel but I use my iPhone and a simple mic. Absolutely. Do it right here in the studio. Yeah. Crack open a beer, give my thoughts, probably make an ass of myself, and you guys all get to watch it. Yeah. But that's what's fun about it. Put yourself out there. Have fun with it. That's it's what's fun. It's easy yeah. and it's it's cheap. <laughs> it really can be. Yeah. Like I mean it's it's if you can get a production company on board to do your stuff and you're in that position, then hell yeah, run with it. But if you've got a smartphone you can do it just as not, yeah, but you I'll can do you, it. You can get you the can message get some across. Great results and, yeah. and actually build a following that way. And I'll tell you what, we do work for beer sometimes. So if anybody's listening, uh, just let us know. You're hired, brother. <laughs> All right, well, fuck my iPhone. We're gonna have you in here filming these weekly pour episodes. I'm not sure of the exact release date, but I'm planning May, so I'll let you guys know in early May cool. when that's coming out. So weekly pour on the Breaking Brews YouTube channel. Subscribe and like it. We may have some listeners out there who have been thinking about going down the documentary road. So having gone down that path yourself, what can you about filming a beer documentary or a documentary of any kind? Uh, I think uh, documentaries actually are on a rise themselves. Um, you know, with Netflix and YouTube and Amazon, access is much better. And people are hungry, you know, for, for, for uh, things that are real. And documentaries definitely fill that bill. And there, a documentary can be, you know, just you talking to a neighbor about their experiences to um, a full blown expose on the 
the underlings of uh... also on Amazon Prime <laughs> right now. I think there's a four part documentary on Lorena Bobbitt. There you go. Exactly. So after yeah. you watch Porn PA, there you go. <laughs> Cutting edge. Uh, 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 that point of the night. All right. Um, but yeah, you know, it doesn't. You don't have to overthink it, and you don't have to have the biggest production. You don't have to have the biggest idea. But tell your own story, or, or tell a story that you know. And I think that's what we like to do is tell stories that we know well, as opposed to um, trying to jump into something that we're unfamiliar with. And I think it shows when you are passionate about a subject or you know something well that comes through in your work. I and mean, it's it's absolutely true. And I mean, this podcast, we're doing a double header this week, depending on when you're picking this up, of course. But this session 13 with Nate talking about Port and PA. Session 14, I'm joined by Matt Fridge, who's doing a documentary on Sheets versus Wawa. Oh, fantastic. So, and, I mean, when, when if you're in Pennsylvania, you know about that rivalry, and it's <laughs> so cool that he's tackling that subject, so you're going to get to hear all about that on the next episode of the Breaking Roos podcast. But like Nate said, there's a lot of a lot of room out there for that, for these stories to be told. And that's, like, personally, when I watch TV, like, that's what I love to watch. I can get into a few series here and there, but documentaries, like, like I think that when I discovered that Fire Festival one, I think oh. I watch it like two or three straight days. I was just like, this I is watched that awesome. one, and then I watched the one on Hulu. Like I, I told everybody, I'm an expert on Fire Festival. Just ask me what you <laughs> want to know now. I never caught the Hulu one, but what what was the the, the differences between the two? Uh, so they actually had him in the the Hulu. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I, How I, the hell did they pull that off? I think he was so pompous and full of himself he just thought and he ends up getting up and walking out of it at some point which <laughs> makes it even that much better um so you see a little bit of a different side to that uh it that whole debacle is fascinating but it just goes to show you like here is one topic that two very popular documentaries were made out of right and and people consumed them um i tasked everybody in our office this year to come up with their own documentary subject and so uh, this year, everyone in the office has to produce a short documentary themselves on different topics. and That's badass. Yeah, so mine is, uh, there's a woman uh, that I know that's a, a local bartender, and she's training for her first MMA fight. Single mom, works three jobs, uh, and she's never fought a, an MMA-style MMA fight before, and, and she's training to do so. So I'm following her. I, I never have either, and I, I'm never going to go <laughs> chase that one. That's awesome. Uh, another guy in the office, his best friend's dad collects pennies and has collected pennies for years and years. So their entire basement has racks and racks of pennies, and he can tell you everything you want to know about a penny, all the differences in the, the ways pennies have been minted through the years, just weird, bizarre, just the fact that he's collecting pennies this long probably has – an insane amount of money racked up in pennies. Sure. Um, the weight of the amount of pennies that he has in his house is astounding. Uh, another documentary. Uh, <laughs> this one's going a little deep, but follow me on it here. If you ever heard the term meat sweats, have yeah, you? Yes. Have you had the meat sweats? So yeah, once uh, a week. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> um, so in the movie, the great outdoors, there was a scene where um, I believe John Candy's trying the meat, meat sweats. sweats. Yeah. Well, evidently that, if you go back and watch it, that is not in it anymore. Get out. Correct. Really? So, right. So, I think I own that DVD, if we'll I'm go, not mistaken. Everybody should go look. Okay. So what happened? Different versions had it in. Other versions did not have it in. Okay. And so there, he has a, a friend who was on a quest to figure out what happened to the line, you're getting the meat sweats. And so it's just, he actually contacted um the the one guy who played the son in the film tried to ask him he ran into him at like a comic-con festival uh-huh. and he's like the meat so it's a real he signed that on his his autograph to the <laughs> to so it's a weird story but in a short i think it's gonna be really funny and and kind of work the quest to find out about the meat sweats in the great outdoors that's really cool i actually, i have an idea for a documentary if you guys want to steal it feel free because i'll probably never get around to doing it the way i want to but What's one thing that every bar has other than good drinks? Wings. Wings, all right. If you go to one bar to the next, their medium wing is different from bar B's medium sure. wing. And then you go back to bar A, and they've got a hot honey 
for, for, you know, just look. and everybody claims they won an award and yeah, the best. everybody's wings are award winning, but everybody's got something good to offer. And sure. I, I freaking love wings. And I like, for example, like up in Buffalo, they just created a wing trail and I think there's oh, wow. 12 bars that are a part of it. And that's where I wanted to get started. I wanted to go cr- I, like take a weekend and crush the wing trail. I'm in on this. This all right. Great. Okay. Yeah. Well, then you've got better camera equipment than me, so let's. I do just this. don't have the uh, palate for really hot wings, but I know some people do. I don't. I'm, I'm more about the flavor. I'm with you. I, if it burns my mouth up, like I'm screwed for the rest of the day. <laughs> I, I, you know, I might do it for sake of video, just to be the. Well, what's asshole. the series right now where they they interview people and they both eat hot wings while they're doing the interview? Have you seen this? I haven't seen this. Check it. I don't. I forget what it's called, but uh, it's it's kind of interesting and and. Big stars are on it, and the, by the, you know they're in that tears sound, by the end of it. That sounds funny. Yeah, is that, funny. that similar to where the, like they try to crack each other up, telling dad jokes bit, and yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that? Okay, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, Nate. Well, as we discussed earlier in the show with Nate, the Port and PA documentary can now be found on Amazon Prime. Go check that out. It's going to become a series here very soon, so stay tuned for that. If our listeners want to follow you guys on the World Wide Web and see all the cool projects you're up to, how do they do that? Yeah, head to portandpa.com or, or check out Port and PA on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. As things develop here, we'll be posting a lot on, on those different avenues. And then um, uh, just watch for us on Amazon. Great stuff. Well, Nate, thanks for coming into town, joining the show. And for all you guys out there, Again, check out Port and PA on Amazon Prime. Nate, once again, thanks, brother. And we will catch up with you again soon on the wing trail. That's going to be the next priority. (laughs) All right, so there you have it. That was Session 13 of the Breaking Brews podcast with Nate Kresge of GK Visual slash Port in Pennsylvania. I'd like to thank Nate once again for dropping by the show, hanging out with me in the studio. Nate also brought me some kick-ass beer from St. Boniface Brewing Company as well as Evergreen Brewing Company. So I've been tipping back a few of those this past week since he made that special delivery. Once again, thanks, Nate, for the beer. Thanks for coming on the show. And congratulations once again on all the success of Port in Pennsylvania. As we talked about in the show, jump over to Amazon Prime and check out Port in PA. And stay tuned on Amazon Prime for the upcoming Port and PA series that GK Visual will be rolling out soon. All right, Session 13 is in the history books. We are moving on to Session 14 in a few short days. Once again, we are staying in movie mode, and I will be joined by Matthew Fridge, who is the producer of a great documentary that is in the works as we speak. And that is a look at the Sheets versus Wawa rivalry. You heard me mention that on the show or when I was talking with Nate. And we're going to have Matt on the podcast to talk about the production of that movie, what it entails. You're going to hear about his Kickstarter campaign and how you can help support the project. For those of us in Pennsylvania, we know Sheets versus Wawa, the rivalry is strong and the allegiances are even stronger. I'm a Sheets guy. I've only been to one Wawa that was not, it wasn't even in Pennsylvania, it was in Virginia. It wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't Sheets. I'm sorry. My allegiance is strong. So I know I don't, I'm not the only one that speaks this way when it comes to these two restaurants. But what's really cool about this documentary and what Matt's bringing to light is how, if you think about Sheets and Wawa, they've both really revolutionized the station. They've taken everything to a whole new level. So it's really neat that Matt's decided to zero in on this topic and you're going to hear all about it. So two days is all you have to wait for the next session of the Breaking Brews podcast to come your way. You'll be joined by me and Matt Fridge talking about Sheets versus Wawa. That's coming at you on Wednesday, May 1st, kicking off May of 2019 in proper fashion. So get ready for session 14. Until then, I'm your host, Jason Sircone, and this has been the Word of the Port.